Good evening and welcome. This is Sports Report. The weather has not been good across the state last week, but that's okay. Basketball is inside. You're ready to put the show, snow shovel up, aren't you? Uh, yeah, we're ready to go. Let's go inside for highlights. We'll start things off in Conference 32. It's a boys basketball matchup at Hidden Valley High School where the Titans play host the Cave Spring Knights, one of the top teams in Group 3A. And you see why there is Mason Rayer, Brody Hicks and company can dial it up from three-point distance. All right, we got some offense here. We're going to take our time. This is going to be Hidden Valley. We're going to run a Hoosier ball. We're going to move it around, keep passing it outside, inside, four. outside. I'm counting the passes, Andy. That's four, five. Outside again. This is pretty good defense Six. here by Cave Springs. Back inside. Spin it up. Outside again. Seven. They're sharing the wealth. Inside again. Finally, there it is. Jonah Fitzgerald takes a shot. Finally, they get a score. Coach Kevin Bertram has to be pleased with the ball movement on that possession. Now Cave Spring under the direction of Jacob Groose trying to answer right back. And they do going in the post with a nice maneuver. Zach Shannon for two. It's much more efficient. That's a much better offense. Here is Jake Furrow, and that's a steal. He flies down the court, looks for some sets, gets some help. Fire from Rayer is no good, and the rebound comes the other way, picked up by Fitzgerald, and the run out by Crosser is good. Ah, the big guy, Fitzgerald, a six foot four sophomore, showing the ability to throw the ball up ahead there and put it on the deck. And inside, it's Brody Hicks. He's headed to Liberty to play his college basketball, one of the front runners for West Region Player of the Year in 3A. And then another three point shot from Cave Spring. They are deadly from the perimeter, 29 20. Nine point lead for Cave Springs as we head into the second half. Ryan Crosser, down low, watch this, watch the reverse. Whoa. He's in a different room. He's in a different room from the hoop when he shot there. Another underclassman, a six foot four junior forward for the Titans. Now Cave Spring going to have to get on those shooters though because right there is a three ball from Tyler Hanson, the senior guard, and Hidden Valley starting to get on a run here at home behind the home fans. Let's try it again as it's Hampton from Devin Musselman, count it. Musselman to Hampton two times in a row and they got the same result. Here comes Cave Springs up. Hicks on the inside. Watch this. Up, oh, no good. Let me get it again. Put it back up. Oh, no, I'm just padding my own rebound stats at this point. There it is. Third time's a charm for Hicks. And Cave Springs, the offensive rebounding would pay dividends in the second half. Hidden Valley now getting to the free throw line to cut into that lead. But at the point, it is Devin Beckner for them. He will throw it in the corner and a drive baseline for the Knights. Look at that move by Jake Furrow. That lead gets expanded from 9 to 11 points as we head to the fourth quarter. Down the stretch we go. Fitzgerald now will pass it over. Now driving to the basket. No good for Hidden Valley. Rebound by Baker Havlin, and that will start the fast break. Beckner passing it in the corner. Three-point shot. No good, but look at the little guy. Stick his nose in there for the putback. Look at the guy in the trees there. It's a tough move. All right, so we're going to go back to Hoosier offense now here for Hidden Valley. Outside, we pass it around. It's Fitzgerald. We're going to keep it on the outside. This is again pretty good defense here for Cave Springs, but I guess you call this patience from Hidden Valley. Patient, deliberate, stall mode, whatever you call it. It's what they do here against a team like Cave Springs. They can get on a run and a big lead and just increase it in the second half. One of the top teams in 3A, and now they're trying to find a good shot, but that defense not allowing it as they deflect the three-point shot off the mark. Cave Spring holds on for the 62 to 50 win. That's a pretty good patient offense there, but the win goes to Cave Spring. Rayer and Hicks combining for 31 points. They go 12 of 17 from the foul line, while Jonah Fitzgerald leads the way in defeat for the Titans. 22 points, 10 of 15 from the strike. Now, started out west, let's come back east now, but let's give the ladies a shot. It's girls basketball on Sports Report. Salem at Princess Anne. And remember, Princess Anne lost to Salem, snapping their win streak against Beast District opponents of over 80 games here as Princess Anne looking for revenge. This is the automatic birth to regionals in 5A South and early on it would be Salem striking from downtown. Salem in the dark, that is Stephanie Jasmine Stephanie from way outside, but in the white is Godiva Hubbard. And remember that name because you're going to hear a lot. Hubbard headed to play at Minnesota, her college basketball. Down the lane goes Kayla Hannibal for Coach Donnie Stiff's Sun Devils. And the ball movement pretty good for Salem early on a three-pointer from Hannibal. They have the early lead. Two in a row for Hannibal. I love it when a plan comes together. Eight to four, Salem up early. But you know, when Darnell Dozier starts barking, his team usually responds as they go inside of Eva Hubbard. Two-time defending state champs going for the three-peat this year. Princess Anne is, and that defense is the main reason why. Ellie Drawhorn with the steal and the layup as the Cavaliers are starting to get the engine running. 
starting to crank it up a little bit. And when you crank it up, you usually go inside the 34. This time she just takes it away on her own. Look at Hubbard running the floor after the steal. That's why she's going to play college hoops in the Big Ten. And that defense starting to become stifling, as you see. Danielle Goodhope diving on the floor. And then it's a steal and layup for Edley Drawhorn as Princess Ann closes out the quarter on a 10-0 spurt. 10-0 It's a 14-8 lead for Princess Ann. They're not quite finished yet. It is good hope with a nice feed to Hubbard and she finishes. And the way you beat a Salem team with a presence in the paint like there and Brianna Jackson, the six foot three freshman center, look at her working hard inside is with transition play and defense. Princess Ann has that and now Salem running Oof. away and it's a block from Hubbard, a nasty one at that. Uh, that's not even a block. I think you file charges if they're not on the basketball court. It's a nice feed inside though, and Jackson gets inside and scores again. Hey, a six foot three freshman Jackson, she is going to be a player to watch in the Hampton Roads area for years to come. Now the pull up jumper, it is money from Diva Hubbard. Outside, inside, Hubbard's got game from all over the place, and here is Steven saying, I got some game too, and one, she draws the foul. And a block inside there, you see there, it's getting a little chippy as you see these teams want it badly. That automatic birth to regionals at stakes, they want to keep on playing. There's more defense. The steal and the finish from Jackson. Well, not Jackson, that's Furby. Five foot eight sophomore. So Coach Dozier has underclassmen contributing a 15 point lead. Now moving to the second half. Princess Ann misses. It's blocked by Jackson inside. Jackson. Possession will stay here as defense is really the story in this battle. Two blocks for Jackson on that play, but no blocks this time. It's Nyla Pollard from the outside. What Princess Ann does so effectively working it inside and then kicking it out when shooters are left open. Then the pull-up jumper is good from Danielle Goodhope. She'll play her college hoops at Winthrop. Little stop and pop J. And speaking of which, here's Hubbard again from the baseline all over the floor. You can't stop her. Offensively, Princess Ann starting to click now. And at the end of the quarter, she just throws it up. Brianna Farabee off the glass and it's good. And the Cavaliers are feeling it a 22 point advantage going to the final stanza. I remember that uh, that lead that they had to start, it's gone now. 22 point lead, step through move by Drawhorn and she collects a foul and some more points. And then you see shooting the passing lanes there, a steal for Farabee. She'll go right in for two. And that Princess Ann defense turning into instant offense and now getting the subs in the action. Salem had the lead early on, but in the end, tell you what, Princess Ann woke up. 57-27 is the final. Hubbard filling the stat sheet, Andy. Look at that, 17 points, 12 rebounds, four blocks, four steals. I think she sold popcorn at halftime. <laughs> Did it all while Drawhorn had 13 points, five boards, and three steals. Brianna Jackson with the double-double in defeat. We have more highlights, including Atlantic Conference 9 boys action. Green run in action versus Salem, while Norview takes on Maury. Some good ones coming up. Stay with us right here on Sports Report. Sports Report with Andy Mashaw. I am Matthew Hatfield. We head back to Kellum High School in Virginia Beach, site of the Atlantic Conference 9 basketball tournament, and it's the boys' turn as Green Run, with a record of 21 and 1, takes on Salem, 12 and 10 overall. Green Run's already secured its regional berth, Andy. Salem trying to get their way into regionals and snap Green Run's 41-game winning streak against Beach District foes. Salem in the dark, Green Run in the white, off the tip. Oh no! Oh, it's the wide. Way the lob to Wood. Oh man, look at the way they start this. That was so gorgeous. We have to watch it again. Twice as nice as Deshaun Wade finds Amani Wood. The junior to junior connection. Coach Kenneth Harris, glad to see that another year beyond this season. Nice little pick from Showers underneath. That's a set play. Here's Cayman Tyson. That's a three ball from the corner. Ah, uh, got it. Probably wasn't on the scouting report. Coming out of nowhere, knocking down a tray for Justin Parrish's Sun Devils. Now Green Run trying to get some action in transition, and they do with Sterling Carrington finding Damon Showers for the layup. Finishing with the left hand for Showers. Look at that move. Back the other way though, here's Tyson again in the corner. There he is, outside, and once again, same result, splash for Tyson. Yeah, you really focus it on TJ Taylor, Jonathan Northland, and Brandon Mitchell for Salem, but the Sun Devils only down four going to the second quarter. Now Ray Ward with a tough finish Ooh. against Sterling Tarrington, against contact going off glass for the little guy. Ball movement, watch this, they call this ball movement. Here's Wade on the dish, inside Wade to Wood and won the foul. You see why Wade being recruited by a number of schools, the junior, showing those combo guard skills and the vision. 19-15, Green run in the lead, 
midway through the second quarter, and now Salem trying to get a run sparked here. Jonathan Norfleet, he's a sophomore getting recruited by D1 schools. He finds TJ Taylor for three, count it. Long three point for Taylor. So this is going back and forth, it's been a close game. Here is Nobles, we had a Nobles sighting. Free throw. Uh, tough pull up by Najon, giving Green Run a four point lead. They go to the half up by just one as Salem will hit a three at the horn. Second half action now, Green Run on the run. Damon Showers stop and pop, no good, but that board work, Amani Wood, Sterling Carrington and company, there's Wood with the putback. And one highlight later, well, it's not a replay, it looks like a replay, but it's not a replay. Wood with the putback again. Green Run had 19 offensive rebounds in this game compared to Salem 6, and that'll be a difference usually. Deshaun Wade, his pull-up jumper is good, and Green Run starting to get a bit of a breathing room here third quarter, but Salem's, they're fighting for their playoff lives. They're not going to quit. They need something here. They need some points. Oh, that's a good dish, and that's a good finish from Taylor underneath. Another sweet pass. Norfleet, the sophomore, delivering it. 38-33, Green Run in the lead. It's winner go home for Salem now, and they're going to play with that sense of urgency. Ray Ward being defended tough by Showers. He finds Norfleet for a three to knot it up, and he nails it. Three-pointer from Norfleet. It is a two-point game. 122 left on the clock. Pressure mounting here for both squads, and this is how we're going to do. We're going to go inside. We're going to fight and play to score. We're going to keep them from scoring points. That's what it says on the sheet. And then that's probably not what they're saying. Yeah, that's basically what they said in the nutshell, though. Deshaun Wade hitting the free throw to give Green Run a six point advantage. Last chance for Salem now, and it's Norfleet. The ball's in his hands, but Damon Showers is going to force the turnover, his seventh steal of the game, and why not finish it off with the layup? Steal defense to offense, and that is the way you close one out. Not quite finished yet, though. Here is the way you really close it out. That, we'll just put that, we don't need that anymore. Crowd can keep that ball. We'll just, we'll just put that away now. The block from Wood, and there's your final. 52-44, Green Run takes it. The fly slaughter of Monty Wood with four blocks to go with his 15 points, 11 rebounds, a double-double, also registering a double-double. Sterling Carrington with 13 points, 14 boards. Brandon Mitchell and TJ Taylor combining for 26 points and seven rejections for Salem in the loss. Stay with us. We've got a couple more games coming right at you, and they're good ones to finish the show. Sports Report continues right after this. Couple other tight games to round things out here. Doesn't get much tighter. Two teams with the exact same record going at it. Norview 15 and 7 overall. Maury 15 and 7 overall. Norview's the number two seed. Maury the number three seed in the Atlantic Conference Nine Tournament semifinals at Kellerman's winner go home. Now Andy Maury won the two regular season matchups. Will it be third times a charm for Norview? We'll find out. Maury in the dark. Norview in the white. Off the tip. We are ready to go. Right away they kick it across. And inside to Lamont Stewart, and watch that move. Look at that move from Stewart. Generally a good idea to get to the guy who's averaging about 16 points, 12 rebounds per game. A double-double, a walking double-double for Jonathan Wilson's pilots. Now here's a guy who is turning into a playmaker. Brian Phillips, the freshman for Jack Baker's bunch, getting to the 10 and finishing. The other way here is Norview, the lob. Oh, it's Steger to Johnson. Keonde Johnson with the fifth. You know what, Steger and Johnson were watching Wade and Wood from Green Run in the game before that, and they said, we want to do this alley-oop action and get on the highlights, and they did. 16 to nine in favor of the Pilots. It's looking like third time will be a charm. That was a pretty, that was a perfect Ooh. pass. Sweet. And watch this one, though. Here's a miss, and oh! 
From nowhere is the freshman, Phillips, the one-handed stuff put back. Look at this, he's showing his athleticism at the guard position, going to the rack and putting it in with one hand as he crams it down. Maury starting to make that run in the second quarter. They're known for doing that before the half and closing out a half under Jack Baker. And now Chase Coleman, he's a ninth grader too, and he's got deep unlimited range from three. That was way out there for Coleman, and he drilled it up. It's a 16 all game, 336 to go in the half. And Chase, the little brother of Matt Coleman, who's now at Oak Hill, the highly recruited junior that used to play at Maury. Now Anthony Williams going to DMI to play college football. Well, he can play some hoops too as he knocks down the jumper from the perimeter. Just inside, three long J for William. Inside an elbow jumper from Darielle Mack. He's the quarterback, but he can make some jumpers too. We've okay, seen the two sport athletes get in here on the act. It's a 23-20 battle at the half in favor of Norview, a good one. Buckle up as this one will go right down to the wire. Keontae Johnson extending the lead for Norview as he connects with the trifecta. It's further away than his first highlight. He made it anyway. Back the other way, they get it back though, and here is Steger. He drives, watch the head fake. Whoop. Underneath, Steger. They call him the heady, diminutive point guard for Jonathan Wilson's group. He might not be tall, but he's got a big, giant-sized heart. 32-24 in favor of the Pilots. Is Maury finished? Well, maybe not quite here. They can get some stops defensively. They'll be right back in it. It's Johnson going to the basket, though, and Norby starting to feel closer to that regional bid as he finishes. A nice finish off the spin move. Maury's not finished yet. We kick it right outside. Oh, here, there he is. There's Coleman way outside. That thing is, he's a freshman. He maybe shot that from 10th grade. The further behind the arc he is, the tougher he is to defend as he knocks that one oh, out from another 30 it. feet shot. He's a as chucker. Maury is only down a point. He does not want to go home just yet. He wants to keep on playing in the postseason. Coleman, one more time, way downtown, bank oh, it in. Oh, why not? Who cares? He's just chucking it up there. When it's that big, just throw it. We're going in. Norview's lead just won. As Coleman, whether he called class or not, Norview knows they have to stop him in order to win and advance on to the championship game of the conference tournament and punch their ticket to regionals. Who will have the ball last? And free throws will be critical too. Maury now trying to take the lead here. Williams, pull up jumper. No good. Whoa. Rebound Norview. Steger's got it. Now it's a free throw shooting contest. Can you make the free throws? Well, Norview does make free throws. Still, Maury's got another shot, so outside, no good, and the rebound, Johnson. And he is fouled, and then they just sort of melt the clock away, and there's your final. 48-42 free throw contest won by Norview. Pilots, third time is a charm. They moved to 16-7 overall. They will open up regional playoff action against Bethel, the number one seed out of conference, Tennessee Stewart with 17 points, 13 rebounds, three block shots. Phillips and Coleman, the two freshmen leading the way for Maury, a combined 33 points and six assists. We've got bears, lots of bears. It's Grizzlies versus Bruins, Grassfield and Western Branch. Here we go. Two Chesapeake rivals hooking up in the Monster Merrimack Conference Two Tournament quarterfinals. You have to win to keep on playing. You lose, your season's over, and right out of the gate, it's another freshman, Brooke Harrell, with the dish to Keshawn Harris for two. My goodness, there's a lot of good ninth graders in Tywood this year. Apparently, here's underneath one. Here's just Deshaun Dixon, and he finishes strong. There comes Josh Berman for Grassfield, the six foot seven junior center. He's got the feathery touch and finishes inside at the three point shooting contest. One's good for Western Branch. Offensive oh, rebound for Racy Lucas. He's blocked, but he's going to keep fighting inside. Look at him battle hard and draws the foul. He gets the foul and he gets the free throw. You got to make that. If you fight that hard for it, you got to make the shot. Oh, no doubt about it. Now, Western Branch, Kendall Bynum up top to Keyshawn Harris. He pulls up just inside the arc and knocks it down. All the way, here's Tristan Coleman. Here's a drive and a one-handed runner. Coleman under uh, really taking on more responsibility scoring with John Cover, one of their top shooters, out with a knee injury. Now you see Grassfield working the ball inside the Berman. He's got a height advantage and he can score it over the guys that aren't as tall as him. It helps when you have that. Outside this time though is Lackawanna and that's a three-point shot. The Grizzlies just three of 20 from three-point range in this game as Western Branch jumped out to that 12-point lead. Grassfield having to play catch up. And Caleb Dawkins knocks it down. Grizzlies starting to get on a run, but here comes Western Branch now for Quan Harrell. The wide view, and it's Harrell, trust us, it's Harrell. And that one rolls in, good shot by Harrell. Still a double digit lead for Western Branch, and it'll be a foul there, sending Grassfield's Keandra Debro to the line, and Paul Hall didn't agree with it. He didn't like it. Free throw is good, they get the friendly roll. At home, they get the friendly roll. Seven point lead for Western Branch now as they will put the ball in the hands of Chris Jones. He goes to the rack, draws the foul on the big guy, so he goes to the line and knocks down a free throw. Now we get a free throw shooting contest for both teams. 
Here is Berman inside, and a nice feed from DeBro, and he finishes. And Grassfield's size, one of their advantages they've had all year long under Coach Tony Collins. Now they're going to kick it out in the corner to Keandre DeBro, and he's going to knock it down from three. Western Branch says, anything you can do, I can do better. They're going to try to answer with a three. It's going to be Kishon Harris. He's going to actually say, you know what, I'll take a step back instead. A fadeaway. That was pretty. Right back the other way is Harris, another jumper. Here's one. DeBro, a jumper. Are we going back and forth here? Mono e mono here. DeBro knocks it down. And it's a tight ball game here. Winner go home now. Everybody's into it in Chesapeake. And Grassfield trying to collect themselves here with that big lead Western Branch had now in transition. Here they go. Kashawn Harris. Uh oh, oh it's going to be an offensive scoop, foul. but it doesn't count. Oh, it was so pretty, too. Fourth quarter. 50 to 36. The Bruins in the lead. Now, Grassfield looking to get the ball inside to Berman. He's not open, so Dawkins says, you know what? I'm going to take matters into my own hands. A deep three. It's oh. good. Well, if you don't block, I'm going to let you shoot. On the other end, it is swatted and stolen. Dawkins can play a defense, too. And he takes it all the way this time by himself. Ah, coast to coast. And gets it to fall. Now Grassfield here. They get the ball with the steal. Jalen Cofield trying to make something happen up top. Now Grassfield Dawkins hesitates, passes over to DeBro. DeBro feeds it inside to Berman, and that guy will score it. Nice feed there and a good finish by Berman. And they're just either they're really confused or they're just trying to run out the clock. They're just trying to run out the clock. And there's a hammer, that's a nice tackle. Cofield. Could be a combination of being confused and running out the clock. Regardless, Western Branch wins by 14 and they move on to the semifinals of the Conference 2 tournament. Kashawn Harris, 21 points, 13 of 14 from the foul line. He can beat Andy and me and Horse. <laughs> Berquan Harrell had 13 points, seven rebounds, six steals. Not a bad set line for a freshman while Josh Berman Led the way for Grassfield, 15 points, 7 of 8 from the field, and 5 rebounds. Bruins over, technically a Grizzly is a Bruins, so I don't know. How, anyway, we know who won. More big matchups coming up next week as we get postseason play. You know, Andy, we got the regional basketball tournaments coming up from 6A through 1A. The private school basketball playoffs are starting up soon as well. That'll begin on March the 4th. That'll be the same weekend as the state quarterfinals. We'll have a lot of state quarterfinal action throughout the state at Old Dominion, VCU, Robinson Secondary School. So check out all your lo local listings for those games coming up. And the state tournament will run March the 7th through March the 12th. Can you believe it's almost here in Richmond? Where did the time go? This is flying by. We were just doing football like last week, and now we got playoffs and basketball. It's unreal. So the conference tournaments determine who gets into the regional field, and then from there they take this year four teams from each region to the state tournament. So this year they've expanded the state tournament back from four teams to eight teams. Give everybody a chance to get a piece of the pie. <laughs> it's a lot of numbers I'm confused about, but we know it's good basketball action, and we'll have it for you next week. Yeah, we'll have all that throughout the rest of the postseason, so you want to keep it right here on Sports Report. But we're out of time. For Andy Mashaw, I'm Matthew Hatfield. We'll do it again next week as we get closer to March right here on Sports Report.